Hmm. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane. Featuring today a one versus one on sort of stuff again. Yes, I know. Not a lot of quality replays I feel lately. Partly due to the fact that the company here is too alpha and everything, pulling out a lot of the good players there. So, but still thought this one was interesting. So let's have a look at that. We shall be watching Kamiya Suk, you want to th 13, uh, numbers, numbers, and of course also my apologies for not streaming again, the Alpha. It's rather been taking up a lot of my time, plus exams, assignments. I'm a bit busy lately, I'm afraid. Opposing him though is 12 Rampage, or Rampage. Fighting for the Americans. Fighting for the 4th Infantry Division in a fight against the 21st Panzer Division. First glance out as the first unit. Point being secured. Courageously being secured, in fact. Alternate here going straight for the fuel point there. Less aggressive movement there, so we might actually be hoping to connect this with some rifle and then push up here initially. Although we also see that the Wehrmacht is heading towards here, so we probably will be seeing the first engagement right about here. Oh, the generator is actually... Oh, huh. fancy that. Thank you, pass from here, though I'm not playing. Engineers here are coming under fire from the Fultz Grenadiers. And the Fultz Grenadiers do succeed in pushing away the engineers right behind the huge stack of logs. Engineers continue down there, we see the pioneers up here, pretty much mirroring the move. And there we go, we are seeing them charging in, and nicely down there the engineers, adding in a bit of extra firepower. And we do see the Wehrmacht opponent quickly retreating, rather realising of course he's not going to do it, be able to do much there, although he might have been able to kill one rifleman, but ultimately the losses would have been higher, so instead he just decided to retreat while time was and preserve manpower. Nicely handled right then, of course, it's all those little things that in the longer run can determine just things like the outcome of a match, you know, sometimes just knowing when to get the bloody hell out of there. Second squad up there for Rampage, and units moving up here, having pretty much no opposition. Another Fulsker squad moving up, the second one, or the first one, basically. Moving in to support Fulsker squad, getting up behind cover, and units getting fired at, Rifleman getting fired at as well. And the other squad is moving heavily towards these, and we do see a full retreat from there from the riflemen. And in fact, a total collapse of the left flank for Vlad. Company of two, yes, this is actually Vlad, I believe. So this is actually a bit easier to say than Company of two. But but so let's call him Vlad because this is Vlad from Romania. Blah. Anyways, <coughs> yes, let's not be nasty to Vlad, or unfriendly, or just tease him too much. But these engineers are probably, or pioneers, are probably going to get a bit of a nasty surprise there on the right hand flank. And the meanwhile, the pioneer in force is laying down some white. Although, again, note, there's a small gap there someone could take advantage of. Just minute, but still there. And he's basically just laying down tons and tons of wire, securing this entire area. Interesting enough, the rifle will not be moving up here. They secured the outer flanks of it while they now the engineers will be charging straight into the Pioneers pushing up through the wire here and we could be seeing a larger assault going in from Rampage hoping to perhaps conduct some Rampage amongst the German troops we are seeing the third squad out and watch a follow up he's not building anything so far but it's also by the way a could be considered a heavy Wehrmacht start what with the three faults and nothing else now go charging in but heavy losses are being suffered the Ravner getting gunned down by the sheer volume of the Fultz Grenadiers and I do mean sheer volume, but the Pioneers on the other hand, of course, are getting a rather grand shaped and flavoured surprise. General East issue beating, and the Pioneer score went down right there for Vlad and the 21st Panzer Division, which did fight somewhere in the Lorraine and such a region after Normandy. It was pretty much the only real Panzer Division of fighting there. We are some Looks like Hans decided to take a leak and got shot down because he chose pretty much the worst place. Caught with his pants down in the zipper open right in front of the Americans. Ah, scheiße. And quite a bit of why he's only leaving this gap here, of course, so he doesn't leave himself out, but still that is pretty interesting. And we are seeing the snipe out, the shaft should set out for the Wehrmacht. Robin moving up there, Robin moving up on the right flank. 
Folks going to be slightly pulling up. A larger rampage assault going in. Will there be grenades? That could be nice for him. Or browning automatics. Push is on nonetheless. Right hand side being secured. Survive here. Could be pushing in, but they're not. We're also seeing a push up there. We're seeing a mine down there for Vlad or companies too. Or the Wehrmacht or whatever. Folks going to see a suffering bit. And there we go. Pushing up there. Snipers adding into the fire. Mine goes off. Killing a bit there. Flame for engineers moving in. No flame for us though. Fulton squad pushed away. Others taking losses. Sniper sniping. Fulton squad could go down already. That would be a huge loss for the Wehrmacht. And it happens. It bloody well happens. Fulton right from squad does in return. Gets cut down. Gunned down by the marksman of the Wehrmacht. Or well, Fulton's kind of dear, so technically not really marksman. We do see a retreat right there from as well, so pretty heavy losses on both sides. Rampage and Vlad having bled quite a bit. Overall though, the Americans do hold more of the map. So that is a bit more to the advantage. We're still losing Riven Squad is never good. But again, losing a full snow squad is not exactly something you sing songs about either. In fact, Vlad is all of a sudden rather low on the unit count. Trier Center going up. Browning Automatics are up as well. Trier Center is probably going to be a nice choice. Going to help keep his troops in the fight longer against fascism and Nazis. Folks are hiding here and laying down some wire to fight in the fight against Americans. Und uncontrolled capitalism. And looks like the engineers are going to get a bit of a look at that before getting shot at though. What are your orders? Sniper quickly taking a point. Rather bold move here, but of course he's probably not worrying so much that someone's going to appear and shoot him in the face. Although he's a bit paranoid, looks like looking over his shoulder. The trees! There are snipers in the trees! No! Clearly traumatized out of an experience on the Eastern Front. We are seeing lots of riflemen now moving out. Somewhat de repleted, but not fully, I think. Flame from engineers taking over some of the assault duties. Decent assault force bunker going up here. Probably going to be a medic bunker for Los Vladis. Fultzkrans here coming under heavy fire as the BRs move in. The light machine guns raking the Fultzkrans with quite a bit of fire, forcing them away. And a Goliath is out. Continuing over here, nicely done. Although he could mine off here as well. In fact, there's actually no mines from the Americans. I think that might actually be a mistake. I mean, that could actually do quite a bit for him to slow down the Wehrmacht advance considerably. But sadly, that does not seem to be happening. And I think that could actually be something he could actually use to really put on a lot of further pressure on the Wehrmacht and perhaps even knock him out. Or at least further cripple him. That does not seem to be happening. And again, I think that could prove to be where Vlad might be able to get another hand. Goliath is sneaking in from the left, left hand side, right and holding up here by the factory, by the walls. The outer walls, anyways, and there we go, the Goliath rolls in. Like a predator. On tiny little treads. Filled with explosives. So, not really a predator, since most predators don't have a tendency of blowing up to get their prey. I think so anyways. As of course we are talking about the Siberian Exploding Tiger. Which rather quickly got extinct. extinct. And his points are being secured. Goliath hiding there. Of course Goliath can hide while in cover. It might be an idea to pull that in there. Or here. That would actually be a pretty good spot. Or here. Or here. Here. Lots of possibilities for the Goliath. But Krieg backs up, Grenadiers on the way, of course, Vlad knows he's not in a rush to deal with any sort of armor, so he's getting a Grenadier squad, and now the Mortar, the Granatenwerfer. And a tank they were going up, so in that sense, Vlad might get a slightly unpleasant surprise soon. Snipe of fire, getting Sergeant Johnson in the back of his head. He's going down as they try to cut wide, of course, they are easier targets while doing so. And the riflemen seem to have completely lost him, begin shooting on the wire. There a bit. Two squads set in to oust the 21st Panzer Division from the right hand side. And there we go, the mortar is out. 
Mine hit and Goliath rolls forward. And the Pioneers might have to run past all of this. And then go the Goliath is there. And the Fulton are pretty low on health. Right, we need to be careful. Careful. Only a few men killed, but still that's something. And the train is probably not going to be moving anywhere anytime soon. The Fulton on the other hand could get cut down on the retreat. Very low on health, but apparently they do make it out of there. Much to the rejoicing of well the Germans, not so much the Americans. Attention. The enemy <laughs> but Vlad is currently having most of the map, and in fact let's go look at the rampage. The rampaging rampager. Could get some Sherman soon. No supplied upgrade as of yet. Bit of quiet. Force is moving east. Mines moves up. In fact, he's now expecting or checking for mines by the Americans, but so far there have been no mines from Rampage and that. Oh, there we go. Finally going down for a little mine, but I think that might be a bit too late now. Of course, we're going to get spotted right away. Cancel the mine. Oh dear, never mind. Mines going down for Vlad on the other hand. And of course, dodging this. MP40 on the way. Arriving here. Oh, just need to retreat. Yes, indeed. Front shifting. Oh, Riven have snug up behind. That one actually proved to be nasty for the sniper. Perhaps you might want to focus on the sniper first, not the. And a bit of a missed opportunity right there, I think. Well, of course, I could have been wrong, but we are seeing a Sherman now on the way for Rampage. The tank depot is alight. The sounds of Sherman production. No doctrine as of yet for Rampage. Water runs flying through the air. Rather with BLs moving in. Could get the mortar, could get it, but no, doesn't quite. Of course, now he knows there's a medic bunker right there. Sherman out, pushing up there. He could try and make a push for this area and try and knock out the bunker veteran. He's two up for Vlad's troops. Of course, he also has a Kampfkraft center. He is further extending his grasp or time in the f first and second tiers, focusing on some pretty heavy infantry heavy combat. Moving up there. There we go, pushing in. Fulton is going in for the rifleman. Flame for us. Engineers have the need to get away. Medic station, of course, for the American command. It could also be an idea to, of course, again, minimize losses. So roll. Glanius get off a grenade, killing no one. Glanius taking, in fact, heavy losses on the retreat. Medic dead. No, actually, it looks like he placed down some mines there, but so far, Vlad has not sent them off. Ooh, mortar run actually kills a few. Medic down. Will he finish off the medic bunker? That would be pretty considerably unpleasant for Vlad this early on. It looks like he might even succeed. We are seeing a mine down there from the German player, from Vlad. From 21st Panzer Division. Troops reinforcing. Meanwhile, fires are burning. High explosive shells are firing into the side of the bunker. And even blowing up bits of the train. How rude. Reinforcement going up there, reinforcement going up there. We are seeing a pack now up. We're seeing. What's that? A Panzer Commander of Sturm Armory? I'm not sure. Mortar rounds hit the top of the Sherman. Don't quite do much damage there. Hit the nearby building, but don't quite actually hit the rifleman. Grenadiers are moving up. We do see a full retreat there. Some return there from Rampage on securing the map. No doctrine still, and you could also do with a supply upgrade, I think. In the longer run, of course, would ensure you have much more manpower, and of course, ensure his rifleman veterans you up quicker. So that would also be something. And he's actually just using this gem to clear out the barbed wire. Definitely a good and a fast method for doing so. No defenses here. We are seeing some folks go sneaking up there with the MP40s in hand, the machine pistol and Fiatzik. Pack sneaking up. Setting up. Rifle 
But Stussy, the MP40 Fox Nest moving up. And they're ooh, close to the mine, close to the mine. I'll drive from nearby. Mortar out. Oh, causes a nasty hit there. Sherman might want to help here with the Fox Grenadiers, you know. There we go. Grenades on the way. He could also go for another rifleman squad. Snipe moves in the was that mine ever finished? Apparently not. Imagine if he just placed a bit further to the right. Chairman those moving in, getting the drop onto Fultz Grenadiers. Rifleman reinforcing. Mine went off there, doing a bit of damage. Apparently Vlad had not had time to clear that one out. Victory points that are taking down for Rampage and the fourth. At the same time, we're seeing troops reinforcing there. Manpower not doing an awful lot. He's floating a bit. He should either go for a doctor or get some more riflemen, I think. Not just be floating manpower. Or get a medic station. Could even get two. Let's just beat this up. At the moment, a bit quiet. Not an awful lot happening. Troops heading eastwards. So a sniper included. Up here getting snuck a bit, moving up here, getting the drop on the pioneers, pushing them away as well. Gonna be on the move. Stay by me and I'll keep you alive. And some kind of is moving up there as well. Mortar slowly setting up, sniper fire again, causing a bit of kills. We are seeing a panzer command up to the 21st panzer division. Oh, adding in some panzers. We are seeing the panzer four moving out. Airborne, he's gone. Airborne? Crowds are grabbing our territory. Wax. Interesting, he might, I might have figured he'd gone either for armor or infantry, but apparently he went for airborne. Panzer 4 trying to hunt down the Sherman. The Sherman might want an up gun in this case. Mortar he actually getting cleared out. He could try and secure it. Oh, there's a Goliath moving out. Goliath, Goliath, retreat, retreat. No. Oh, Rifleman squad utterly obliterated. Veterans, you want up already for the Panthers. Sticky bombs on the way. Panzer four moves in, getting quite a bit blasted. And there we go, a bit of damage. You're losing a munition sector. Points are being secured. Germans making good progress again. Sticky bomb soon done. I would definitely suggest again either a medic station or supply an upgrade or a tank depot upgrade for the Shermans or perhaps just getting a medic station. He needs to invest in something a bit extra. More to recruit. By the looks of it by Fultz Grenadiers. Another Goliath. Seems like Vlad is quite fond of his Goliaths. On the bunker up. Goliath getting spotted. Will he get knocked out? Airborne need to retreat. Oh, that was nasty. Squawk getting called in. Sniper continues to snipe. King will open up here. He should be careful. Panzer force moving in. Although they could get the sniper, they could get him. And they did! Oh, that was unfortunate for Vlad. Bunker here stopped. Yes, sir. Our front lines are Another recallless rifle upgrade. Sherman ready for the fight again, but again, up gun, up gun, up gun. Get it, Mr. Vlad. Against the vis... Oh, well, Mr. Rampage against Vlad's Panzer Force, in which case you will have the advantage. If not, this Panzer Force and other veterans one will win. We're losing a munitions point. Able Company has the <laughs> paratroopers on point. 
And now we're seeing the Ritterkreuz take out. Knights cross for the Sturmgewehrs going straight for the airborne. Tearing through them. In fact, since again they ignored the damage reduction due to the assault rifles that airborne actually get from airborne armor. Fultz goes moving in. And then we got a full retreat from the Americans right there. Mortar rounds out hitting their own Fultz grenadiers. Come on, man. Have you been drinking again? Unit down. And there we go. A small kill there for the Sherman. Giving it up to nine. Panzerwall back for repairs. Probably more on the way. That would not be a bad thing, though, again. An outgun for the Sherman will also be good. And again, some plot upgrades. I mean, note he's down to 200 manpower upkeep. That's not an awful lot, otherwise, what he could be getting if he'd gotten the upgrades. Plus, of course, surviving would be getting more veterancy, which, again, considering he has barely any veterancy at all on his rifleman, should be something he really should be considering. We're losing ground out there. Going for there again. Nice map control so far by Vlad. Forces should soon also be ready. Hands of four moves out. And there we go, a bit of recall his rifle fired, doing a bit of damage. Finding further here, more airborne rifleman, Knights Cross Force is getting caught out. Shambling in, should be careful though, there's of course it's the pack. Airborne getting quite handily blasted into the ground. Nice breakthrough here. Oh, of course, there's the more to try and slow things down or even mess it up. And assault. Vlad has gone Blitzkrieg. Right hand side so far. And Blitz grenading. So far, not achieving much. Not even a single stun. And there we go. Second Panzer Fort is out. Exactly time to return to him. Grenades going back, but the false gun is almost getting the squads. Almost. More trans falling down. Knights course charging here. Panzer IV providing cover fire for all of this. And the Sherman versus the Panzer IV, but the pack is firing, thus clearly giving the advantage to the Panzer IV. And you just need to quickly get repairing. Airball needs to try and stop this Panzer IV. In the meanwhile, of total collapse right here on the left side as the Panzer IV and the Knights cross with mortar in support falls away the Americans. Forward supply lines are working. Airborne doing what they can to stop the Panzer IV. Anti tank are moving and damaged engine on the Panzer IV. Anti tank on dropping in. But there's a second Panzer IV moving in from behind. Panzer IV could go down and it is out of control. But the Sherman might get lost. Not so good handling right there by Rampage. And there we go. Kaput. The Yankee is kaput. Anti tank on the right here. Quickly cleared out. Anti tank. And the anti tank, of course, here could also get cleared out, but the Panzer IV as it quickly moves behind it. And the other anti tank looks to be escaping. Oh, never mind, the crew got killed. Rifemen are moving in. And another Panzer IV is already out. So three ones, all in all, so far for the 21st Panzer Division. Airborne getting squished beneath the mighty threats. A bit too much. Of course. If he could get off a sticky bomb there, that would be great. Anti-tank and recruit. Some engineers. No sticky bombs. Oh, wait, there we go. Knights, course, and pioneers nearby. And damaged engine. Trying to turn about. Pioneers trying to move in. We are seeing the third Panzer IV moving in. But not quickly enough. And the Knights cross, them nice Knights cross themselves could go down. Mortars firing away. Chaos and pandemonium ensues. As the Panzer IV, Panzer 21st Panzer is suffering quite heavily under mortar fire. Well, not under mortar fire, that's the other chaps. The 4th Infantry. But the Airborne are doing quite a bit of damage. Rifle is certainly not helping either. Very little infantry left for Vlad at the moment. Grenade on the mortar, clearing that out. Reserves are ready to deploy. We are seeing man publics prepared. We are also seeing stormtroopers get ma getting made ready, and we are seeing the airborne finally forced away. Here. Not a lot left for Vlad. 
This could certainly be the moment where the American might regain a lot of the map. Let's just speed it up while we wait for that to happen. Bit of a recon run. More to recruit. Our forward supply lines are broken. Gained. is moving up. Still not a lot of infantry. Going for snipers by the looks at manpower blitz. Panzer IV. Three snipers? That seems a bit excessive. A bit too sniper spammy, of course, considering all the infantry. One could imagine why, but even then, he could very quickly backfire on you. So. Medic Bunker once more made short work off. Not really a lot of luck there. Snipers are doing what they can to drive back the Americans. Or oh, the quicker cut got down right there. And Sticky Bomb immediately goes off in the Panzer. Four airborne now moving in. Damaged engine, less than half health. There's nothing nearby to support it. Focus on winning against the engineers. Cutting them down, gutting them. Another Panzer for ready. Airborne now moving in. Rear armor hits and out of control. Snipers though to continue, continue to kill. He could actually lose the sniper to return from the rifleman. Although now medic's pack is going up, we do see a retreat there. Panzer IV moves in against the airborne sniper joins into support. The usual sort of combined arms formation. Fox is suffering a bit, anti-tank and moving about, not entirely sure where it wants to be. And the airborne did not retreat instead, they got cleared out, leaving behind an anti-tank and anti well, the college rifle. This is looking considerably less well for the Americans all of a sudden. A bit of unit preservation here and there, and all of a sudden we are seeing a bit of dominance right now. We're seeing veterans free rifle squads up as well. And tearing through the false gun it is. Very close, very close. Not quite enough. Heavy losses nonetheless, heavy no losses nonetheless. Pushing up on the right hand side, sniper supporting, can deal with the infantry quite nicely. And of course the airborne could cause a bit of a problem. And of course an upgun Sherman could certainly easily deal with it. And again, I mean, if you go for a tank depot, only build one thing and then proceed to never use it. Perhaps you never should have gone for it in the first place because, again, you're not really getting much out of it. And in particular for American armor, the trick is usually to get more than one of it. Sniper ready. You usually want something around two or three. Sniper ready to engage. Pioneers have captured munitions location. Just saying. Clearing out his own anti tank gun so that Mr. American cannot seize it. Rampage, still rampaging, going for the deeper flanks. And of course, there's still the snipers. They're not quite succeeding in hitting. Of course, the riflemen do become harder to hit as they gain more veterancy. So, of course, that could help a bit against the snipers, in fact. Now, going. Ooh, strafing run, getting one sniper scored. And the rest are forced to run past through the riflemen. This is, oh, not good at all, not good at all, not good at all. Sniper down. Three snipers gone in the blink of an eye. And some pioneers with a recall is right. Definitely, that was a massive, insane loss right there for Vlad. I mean, he just lost pretty much a thousand manpower in the blink of an eye in a few seconds. So again, that's also a good, you know, warning in why you should be careful with your snipers. We saw right there was definitely a nice handling by Rampage, strafing run, riflemen, and of course again veterancy from the rifle actually protects against snipers, unlike veterancy from grenadiers, which actually makes them easier target for snipers. So there's something there as well. Panzer force down now, the mortar is exposed. Heinz standing on the wrong side of the huge concrete wall. Gets shot in the head and the mortar crew gets annihilated. 
Casualties are insane. Knight's Cross, and he's getting more snipers. He's probably to train up, but again, he could also res resort in just training out his own lack. And again, just one Sherman out could pretty much prove it all useless. But apparently, Vlad is seeing salvation through the Ritterkreuz Träger. Well, Spinning things up a bit. Might as well return to Rampage. The enemy is down to 300 points. Who does have a bit more, but he's certainly not doing quite easily as well. And oh, these knights, of course, will probably go down. So that's just. Oh! No! Rampage seems to be ignoring them a bit too late! And now he's pushing up there against the veteran Z3 Rifleman. Also, who needs to get away? And by way, I do mean quite far away. Instead, the Knights Cross are simply getting churned up, chewed up, in fact. And could resort in another s in the squad loss. Veterans in front from the engineers. And we are seeing Snap. We are also seeing a sword going in from the Fultz Grenadiers. And a strafing run. Clearly trying to get the snipers. Come on. Oh, come on, Fraps. Yeah, come on. I know you can do it. Apparently you couldn't. Oh, there we go. Back online, my apologies. Bit of trouble there. Two snipers out though. Tried to strafing run them. Don't look like he. Doesn't look like he. Do what? Quite succeeded. Which I suppose is tragic for him. Still low on infantry, and of course the snipers are not going to help. On the other hand, again, Vlad could easily risk that one little thing, and he's all gone. But you know, you should not be a bit careful about strafing running. Sometimes it can work, but it's a lot more erratic now. So it's definitely not a guaranteed kill like it was. Was in fact earlier in patches where basically you know calling strafing run snipers gone. So that obviously had to be fixed. Three, two veterans with three rifle scores, so that is definitely going to be a bit of a problem to deal with. More knights cross rushing out. Bit of a raw solution right there by Rampage. We are seeing some Shermans out now again. That's considerably better. Snipers firing away. Rafa could try to hit them in the flank. That's good. Sehr good. And there you go. Need to move up there. Need to move up there. Try and hit them on the retreat path. You know they're going to move on way. Slow. Slow there by Rampage. Definitely missed an opportunity, I think, there to get some snipers killed permanently. And in that sense, you should always try to sort of have in mind what possible retreat path your opponent's troops could take. He did lose a few squads, and there we go, Sean moving in. Although Airborne are getting pretty much brutalized. He seems to be forgetting about the sniper again, allowing him to escape as well. Uh, not really good sniper handling right there by Rampage, I think. And definitely gave Lant the chance to fight again another day. Of course, the Knights Cross here are in a very, very bad spot. And they will be sent home in nice little pine boxes. And all of a sudden, Vlad is very low in infantry again. Although he is currently out to salvage munitions, he might be going for another off-map. Well, manpower blitz. He's also got an observation post there. So again, manpower blitz could be the order of the day. In which case, of course, he's probably going to call in the Panther right there if he has the fuel for it. Fifty caliber there. Rampage reinforcing. Need again. I think he needs something. An upgrade there. Getting salvaging, 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 and there we go. Panzer command lighting up. Panzer showing up, but it's not really doing much. Of course, rampage might be feeling a bit worried, but at the same time, this is really the time he needs to push forward and do as much damage and take as much territory. Away from the Germans as possible. But sadly, that does not quite seem to be happening. Airborne rifles ready. Paratroopers on point. Could be what Vlad needs to get back into the game. But there we go. 
Lining up for the assault and moving in. Sniper fire. Hitting a rifleman here, hitting a rifleman there. Mine going down. No grenades, perhaps. That would be nice. Rifleman getting rather viciously sniped. In fact, there we go. The sniper's on the retreat. Doesn't quite hit them. We are seeing a panther out. Panzer Kampfwagen 5. Pioneers going down, though. But not the snipers now. There's a panther to keep the Sherman at bay. This could very much turn out to be a bit of a problem now for Rampage. It was a bit too slow, I fear. Now the Panzer V is here. You should at least move up the anti-tank now to perhaps support it. As of course, as soon as he sees the Panzer and realizes Panther and realizes he's in trouble, there we go. Right from opening up, but so are the snipers. And we are now seeing three snipers again. Not really. Uh, what I'd like to see from Vlad. But currently the American player of course is having a bit of trouble dealing with that. So of course Vlad is probably going to go for what of course is causing the most damage. Still not perhaps the most exciting thing in that sense. Sniper spam to be honest. But snipers will thankfully be considerably less powerful in coming here too. Hiding up here. It's not quite happy, of course, about the presence of a very heavy German Panzers. Well, Panzer. The Panther, of course, being a fun little tank. Of course, it also had a rather interesting design flaw due to the fact it was using aircraft engines. Which it was, apparently. But the thing was, if... Well, at least some of the variants, if it tilted too much, the engine would simply burst into flames. And, you know, the tank would catch on fire. Anti-tank and they're getting sniped out. That is a bit unfortunate. Recon run. Interesting. Is he hoping to land down a strafing run? And he is. Snipers are awfully close to each other. So Enemy unit there we go. Sniper down, but the other two survive. He could recruit the anti-tank gun and hit the panther. That would work. That would work. No. Not doing that. Very much of a shame right there by... Rampage again. I think he sometimes have a tendency of missing some opportunities that could otherwise have netted him quite some results. Probably another sniper from there. Sturm Armory up. Still holding most of the map. Speeding things up again a bit. Going up there. Securing a recallless rifle. And another strafing run. Enemy unit and down. getting another sniper. But there's another one out. And of course the question becomes, is 150 munitions worth just getting one sniper every time? We're losing ground out there. A very good question indeed. And now we are seeing a Tiger out to support the 21st Panzer Division. Rolling out in force. And again, the snipers. Always with the snipers. Must admit, I'm a bit disappointed in land for that one. And a bit of nice work up here trying to clear out the observation post. We're seeing an officer out. The Lieutenant. And uh, there we go, pushing them away. Tiger firing away majestically. And of course, question becomes, what will Rampage do? He's in a bit of a tight spot. Focus a lot of resources on airborne and all that. So of course, now his pads are and more specifically, his blowing up enemy tanks. His tanks department is a bit low. The course while recall his rifles will deal nicely with the Panzer IV of Stuk. Panthers and Tigers are a bit harder. This is, of course, where it's going to get a bit tricky. To say the least. Right, those holding on. Bankers going down. Could be repair bankers to help deal with the Panther so he doesn't have to manage it so much.
Now go moving forward. Blobbing up though. Dangerous stuff. Dangerous stuff in particular front of the tiger with the tiger goes around. Sherman moving in. Should also be careful and should not stop up right in front of it if you should do anything. You should be trying to flank the tiger. Sticky bomb go off. Sniper's running away. Doesn't even get job of damage engine with the sticky bomb. Panther charges in. More sticky bombs. Doesn't either succeed in damaging the engine. That's quite some luck right there. All the rampage, rampage does succeed in getting his German out of there. More sticky bombs. Will that get the tiger? Damage engine finally. Now the question is, of course, how will the Ripen clear it out since they are still under fire from a tiger? No, it decides to focus down the panther. Snipers add in. Another bunker going down. And the rifle on the run. They do manage to get out of there. Oh, rifle again getting sniped. And the officer's basically having fun right there on the right hand side. Securing point one, no one's there to bother him. We are ready to push back the Yankees. And the bunker is up. Panther language is majestically over the battlefield. Tons of heavy machine guns and mortars in the base, but they're never going to see use. Never. What are your orders? Speeding things up again, not much happening, so no point in waiting around. Well, the fight couldn't stay. Now the Lightning once more keeps the flank clear, but for how long? He's just used his ability. There we go. Engineers are moving in. And the Leutnant legs it while the snipers are moving up. Our forward supply lines are broken. The Tiger on the other hand compared to the Panther was actually more mechanically reliable overall. Strafing run doesn't do much this time though. Bit of a waste again. We should be careful about trying to use strafing runs to get snipers. Of course, the Tiger was only more reliable than the Panther as long as it was properly maintained. So, of course, there's a bit of a caveat. But the Panther, on the other hand, was more mechanically unreliable and, of course, also quite a lot of maintenance. So, while it certainly was a powerful tank, it also drained a lot of resources. Airborne moving in. Tiger gets off a nice hit. Rifle moving in. Clearly hoping to do the most of the damage but again. All the repair bunks are quickly repairing things up and we're looking in out. In fact, at three repair bunkers. That is definitely Vlad knowing what he needs to focus on. That's the tanks. And Veteran 2 on the way for the support units. Sticky bomb on the Tigers. Heavy losses are being inflicted. 20 kills on the Tiger. Airborne again sneaking in. Third snipe on the way. Lad, oh lad. A few of the repair mechanics did go down. Lots of sniper fire. You can just hear those cracks in the background even if you're not there. But it certainly has served to drain the American commander quite Sniper viciously. While well, he certainly did have the early advantage, he rather didn't quite fully exploit it with enough mines. And again, I don't think he you know, should have gone for the tank there if he didn't intend to actually fully focus on it. In that case, he probably would have been better served off with a weapon support and perhaps some snipers instead. Which could also, in the long run, perhaps have to deal with Vlad's snipers. Plus, of course, with the recon runs, he might have had the advantage there as well. So overall, rather think that Rampage committed a few tactical mistakes of a higher kind and strategic one for that matter. Snipers firing away, and there you go, Panther moving in, anti-tank gun drops in. And of course, Christian becomes if Airborne was in the right doctrine. The 
And if something like armor might not have been better. Or infantry. And we're seeing another sword. We're seeing the panther almost out. Almost, but not quite. A grenade right at the Fultonist could finish them off. Though they are getting gunned down by all the veterans of fleet troops. And they are gone. Officer that moves in. Tiger taking a bit of damage, but ultimately the recorders rather don't do much. And the officer is actually moving in. And we are seeing artillery going in from the officer. That's pretty unusual. Doesn't do an awful lot of damage to the Sherman, of course. And of course, it's also quite delayed. That was rather the main problem with the officer's artillery. It's not really good at anything that can actually move. I mean, if the opponent absolutely does not notice it, it probably can do a lot, but it's a bit hard to notice in single officer running up and then all of us. So, yeah. I'm a bit unhappy with that ability. Tiger, though, all of a sudden actually taking quite a bit of damage. Panther, though, quickly repaired again. The three repair bungas doing absolutely wondrous. And there we go. The Panther is... The Tiger is down, actually. Panther is quite fun. The rifle, though, need to retreat. Snipers are gunning down. Not to repair. Chaps moving in. Sherman down. The Panther is almost down. But the rifle and Alder just getting murdered. Veterans into another squad. And there we go. Full retreat. And now the anti-tank gun needs to retreat. Pull back. And we see an empty bunker up there to cover the victory point. And there you go, the anti-tank gun quickly became a victim. And the officer sends a base to his filthy engineers from his Deutschland. Let's bring things up a bit again. Points are being secured. Sniper. And the anti tank are getting wrecked again, moving up here. One last assault. Goliath's going out. And he doesn't even know it, and he's awfully close. Snap a fire, and if the Goliath is built right here, which it is. Oh no, he's not noticing! He's not! And good night. That's pretty much GG. Of course, he's now sending out a jeep to hunt down the snipers. I think it's a bit on the too late end. And there we go. Oh, you don't say GG yourself. Run for the opponent. That's nice. Strafing run. Gets the snipers, I think. But of course, now it's a bit too late. Too little too late in that department. Yeah, a little late. So, game over. It was rather close, though. I mean... Rampage did hold the advantage initially, but well, somewhat mid-game wise. But there were some mistakes again. I don't. I think he should have gone more into the tank depot if he'd really intended to use it. Perhaps support either with artillery from the infantry doctrine or with the armor doctrine, perhaps with some Pershings or Calibes. In fact, the Calibes could have helped with the snipers probably, but neither really happened. Instead, he went for airborne. He didn't quite fully exploit the tank depot, meaning it was basically just a waste of resources. Nor were there any supply upgrades and medic stations again. So again, he was rather setting himself for getting hurt in the longer run. And he was hurt bad. I mean, it was certainly also black going for the right-hand side, going for Blitzkrieg constantly. Blitz resources, Blitz resources, Blitz resources, Blitz resources. Lots of snipers, not what I like to see. Although, I mean, initially Rampage was able to sort of handle it nicely. But in the longer run, again, he was running into a bit of problems because now the pans have been the way. So that was also something that needed to be worked on. But overall, interesting fight, perhaps not the sort of thing I would have liked to see Vlad do, you know, the sniper spam, but certainly shows what can be done with it to a certain extent, but also shows, you know, what you can do with airborne, what you can't. And again, you know, don't go for a tank depot if you don't intend to fully go for it. So there you go, hope you enjoyed this match. If you did, why not subscribe and tell your friends, and if you didn't, well, why not send a replay of your own, or provide some feedback in the comment section. This is Imperial Dane, saying cheers.